Chapters 19 through 24 of the Second Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Second Book of Samuel, Chapters 19 through 24. Chapter 19. Then the king trembled and went up the stairs of the gate, and wept and exclaimed, You have killed my son, Absalom! My son, my son, Absalom! I wish I myself had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son! But it was reported to Joab, the king is weeping and lamenting over Absalom. Consequently, today's victory will become a sorrow to all the army. For the army will hear it said now that the king laments it because of his son, and the forces will have to skulk into the city today like an army skulks in when it is ashamed by flying from battle. For the king hides his face, and the king shrieks with a loud voice, My son, Absalom! Absalom, my son, my son! Joab consequently went to the king into the house and asked, <sighs> do you wish to insult to their faces today all your officers who have preserved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and the lives of your slave wives you love your enemies and hate your friends for you make it clear today that your officers and soldiers are nothing to you for I now perceive if Absalom were alive and all of us had been killed today it would have been right in your eyes but however, get up and go out and speak to the hearts of your soldiers, for by the ever-living I swear to you that if you delay it, there will not be a single man with you tonight. And that will be worse for you than all the suffering that has come upon you from your youth until now. The king consequently arose and sat at the gate, and it was reported to the army. The king is now sitting at the gate. So the whole force passed in before the king, but Israel fled each to his own home. All the people, however, were discussing in all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hands of all our enemies, and he protected us from the power of the Philistim, and now he has been chased from the country on account of Absalom. But Absalom, whom he consecrated over us, has been killed in battle. So why are you silent now about restoring the king? King David, however, sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priests to say, Speak to the judges of Judah, asking, why do you hang back from restoring the king to his house when all Israel demand the return of the king to his home? You are my relatives, my bones and my flesh. Then why are you hanging back from restoring the king? And he said to Amasa, Are you not my bones and my flesh? God do this to me and more than it if you shall not be perpetual commander of the army before me in place of Joab. Then the heart of the people of Judah turned as one man, and they sent to the king, let yourself return with all your servants. The king consequently returned and came to the Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal, marching to meet the king, to bring the king over Jordan. Shammai ben Gera, the Benjaminite of Bakurim, also made haste and went down with Judah to meet King David, and a thousand men with him from Benjamin. Also Ziba the steward of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and twenty attendants, and they crossed the Jordan in the presence of the king. They crossed in a ferry-boat to carry over the family of the king, and behaved well in his sight. Then Shammai ben Gera fell down before the king on his crossing the Jordan, and said to the king, Do not let your majesty impute it as a crime to me, and do not remember how your servant offended at the time when your majesty came out from Jerusalem. Let not the king lay it to heart, for your servant knows that he sinned. Consequently I have now come the first of all the house of Judah to descend to meet the king. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, interrupted and asked, Shall not Shimei be put to death for that? For he cursed the consecrated of the ever-living. David, however, answered, What is there between you and I, sons of Zeruiah, that you should today be inciting me to kill people in Israel? For do I not recognize now that I am king over Israel? Then the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king promised him. Mephibosheth ben Saul also came down to meet the king and to pay his respects. He had not changed his clothes from the day the king went away until the day when he returned in peace. And when he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, 
Why did you not go away with me, Mephibosheth? When he answered, Your Majesty the King, my servant deceived me, for your servant ordered him to saddle my ass, and I would mount it and follow the king, for your servant is a cripple. But instead of it, he libeled your servant to your majesty the king. However, your majesty is like a messenger of God. Therefore, do what is good in your opinion. For all my father's family would have been dead men but for your majesty. You also appointed your servant to eat at your table. And what right was there ever for me to appeal to the king? Then the king replied, Why should you say more? I will order that you and Ziba must divide the property. But Mephibosheth answered the king, Let him take the whole, since your majesty has come back in peace to your home. Barzillai the Giladite also came down from Rogalim and advanced to the Jordan with the king to help him over the Jordan. Barzillai, however, was very old, eighty years of age, and he had provided for the king at his own residence at Machanim, for he was a very great man. Consequently the king said to Barzillai, You served me and provided for me, so I will provide for you with myself in Jerusalem. But Barzillai answered the king, How long would be the years of my life if I were to go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am eighty years old today. Can I distinguish between pleasant and unpleasant in the taste of what I eat and what I drink? Can I even hear the tones of men and women singers? Then why should your servant continue to burden the king? How little it costs passing the king over the Jordan. So why should the king pay me wages for it? Let your servant return, and I will stay in my own village near the tomb of my father and mother. But however your servant Kimham can go with your majesty, and do to him whatever is good in your eyes. So the king replied, Kimham shall go with me, and I will benefit him as I see right, and all that you choose I will do for you. Then all the forces passed over the Jordan when the king had passed. The king afterwards saluted Barzillai and thanked him, and he returned to his home. The king then advanced to Gilgal, and Kimham his minister with him, and all the forces of Judah advanced with the king, and also a part of the forces of Israel. And then all the men of Israel came to the king and asked him, why have our relatives the men of judah stolen you and brought the king and his family over the jordan and all the princes of david with him when all the men of judah retorted upon the men of israel who drove the king to us and why are you furious over this business have we eaten anything with the king except what we brought ourselves and the men of israel rejoined to the men of judah we have ten parts in the kingdom and also more in david than you then why have you slighted and not sent a message first to us about restoring our king? But the words of the men of Judah were more bitter than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20 So Sheba ben Bichri, a man of Benjamin, cried out and sounded a trumpet and exclaimed, We have no part in David, and no share in the son of Jesai. Israel, everyone to your tents! So all the officers of Israel went from following David to follow after Sheba ben Bichri. But the officers of Judah continued with the king and went to Jerusalem. When David came to his palace in Jerusalem, the king took the ten slave wives whom he had appointed to take care of the palace, and placed them in a house apart, and provided for them, but he went not to them. And they were in confinement to the day of their death. They lived as widows. The king then said to Amasa, Summon to me the officers of Judah in three days' time, and you appear with them. Amasa accordingly went and convoked Judah, but was delayed beyond the time appointed. Then David addressed Amasa, You know that Sheba ben Bichri may injure us more than Absalom. Therefore take the soldiers of your prince and follow after him, for fear he should find some fortified towns and escape from our control. The men of Joab, however, had followed him. So the guards and the light infantry and all the heavy also proceeded from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba ben Bichri as far as the great stone that is near Gibeon, and Amasa marched before them, where he met Joab with his belt over his armor and a sword on the belt braced up to his waist, and he bowed. Then Joab asked, Are you well, brother Amasa? And Joab took the beard of Amasa in his right hand as if to kiss him. But Amasa did not notice the sword that Joab had in his hand, so he struck him with it in the belly, and his bowels fell out on the earth, for he could not resist him, but died. 
Joab and Abishai his brother were pursuing Sheba ben Bichri. And a man of the staff of Joab stood near him and exclaimed, Whoever sides with Joab and whoever with David, let him follow Joab. But Amasa was wallowing in blood in the middle of the highway, so when the man saw that the forces halted, he rolled Amasa from the highway into the fields and threw a cloak over him, because he saw that all who came to him halted. When he was removed out of the road, the men followed Joab to pursue Sheba ben Bichri, who had passed through all the tribes of Israel to Ablah and Beth Maka, and all the Berim, who had collected and followed him. They, however, pursued and besieged him in Ablah of Beth Maka, and built an embankment against the citadel, and filled up the moat. But while the army with Joab were battering to breach the wall, a clever woman called out from the city, Listen! Listen! I wish to speak to Joab. Come here, and I will speak to him. He accordingly approached, and she asked, Are you Joab? And he answered, I am. When she replied, Listen to what I say. And he answered, I will listen. When she continued, Formerly they used to say when discussing a matter, Make an enquiry at Abel, and that ended it. I am one of the peaceful crowd in Israel. You are seeking to murder a city and mother in Israel. Why would you desolate the Lord's estate? But Joab answered and said to her, It would be a terror at night to me if I should destroy or desolate it. Do not say so. But a man from Mount Ephraim named Sheba ben Bichri has raised his hand against King David. Only give him to me and I will leave the town. The woman therefore answered Joab, then I will fling you his head over the wall. The woman therefore went to some of the soldiers on the wall, and they cut off the head of Sheba ben Bichri and flung it to Joab, who blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, each to his tent, and Joab returned to Jerusalem to the king. Then Joab was appointed over the whole army of Israel, and Benaiah ben Jehoiada over the guards and light infantry, and Adoram ben Akailud was chancellor, and Sheba secretary, and Zadok and Abiathar priests, and Ira the Jarite was priest to David. Chapter 21 There was once a famine in the time of David for three years, year after year, so David sought the presence of the ever-living, and the ever-living said, It is for Saul and his murderous house, because he killed the Gibeonites. The king consequently sent for the Gibeonites, and asked them, for the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but a remnant of the Amorites, to whom the children of Israel had sworn. But Saul wished to exterminate them in his zeal for the children of Israel and the ever-living. David asked the Gibeonites, What can I do for you? And by what can I make amends, so that you will bless the inheritance of the ever-living? And the Gibeonites replied to him, We will not take silver or gold from Saul or his family, and no man shall be killed in Israel for us. Then he said, Whatever you ask, I will do for you. And they answered the king, The man who destroyed us and who wasted us so that we are prohibited from residing in any part of Israel, let there be given to us seven men from his children, and we will hang them for the ever-living in Gibbath of Saul, the elect of the ever-living. And the king said, I will give them. But the king refrained from Mephibosheth, the son of Jehonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath of the ever-living that was between David and Jehonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpha, the daughter of Aiah, whom she had borne to Saul, Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adrial ben Barzillai, the Macholathite, and delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hung them on a hill before the ever-living, and the seven fell at once, and were killed at the time of harvest before they begin to cut the barley. Rizpha, the daughter of Aiah, however, took sackcloth and covered the rock with it from the beginning of harvest until the rain fell on them from the sky, and would not allow a bird of the air to alight upon them by day, or a wild beast of the field by night. And it was reported to David what Rizpha, the daughter of Aiah, the slave-wife of Saul, was doing. So David sent and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jehonathan his son from the masters of Jabesh-gilad, which they had taken from the walls of Bethshan, where the Philistim had hung them at the time that the Philistim defeated Saul at Gilboa, 
and brought from there the bones of Saul and the bones of Jehonathan his son, and included the bones of those who were hung, and buried the bones of Saul and Jehonathan his son in the district of Benjamin, at the side of the tomb of Kish his father. All that the king ordered was done. Then he entreated God for the country after that. But there was war again between the Philistim and Israel, and David went down with his forces and fought the Philistim, and David became exhausted. Then Banab, who was of the race of the Repha, and had a spear weighing three hundred shekels of brass, and was clothed in new armor, stood up and declared he would kill David. But Abishai ben Zeruiah helped him and struck the Philistine and killed him. David's generals consequently swore to him, saying, You shall not go again with us into battle, so that the light of Israel may not be extinguished. But after this there was again a battle at Gob with the Philistim, when Sibkai killed Suf, who was of the race of the Repha. And there was again a battle at Gob with the Philistim, and Abkanan ben Jarai, the weaver of Bethlehem, defeated Galitha the Githite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There was also another battle with the Philistim at Gath, where there was a man of Midian with six fingers on his hands and six toes on his feet, twenty-four in number and he was also of the race of the Repha, and he challenged Israel. But Jehonathan ben Shemai, the brother of David, defeated him. These four were born of the Rephaim in Gath, and fell by the hand of David and by the hands of his officers. Chapter 22 David recited the words of this song to the ever-living, when the ever-living had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, and said, the Lord was a rock and fortress and refuge to me. God is my fort, I will trust in him. My shield and buckler, my tower and hold, my savior who saved from oppression. In despair I will cry to the Lord, and I shall be saved from my foemen. When death's waves enclosed and wild torrents sucked in, the grave's ropes entangling and fearing death's traps, in my trouble I cried to the Lord, and cried out aloud to my God, and my voice from his temple he heard, and my shouts reached his ears. Then the earth trembled and quaked, the supports of the heavens were shaken, and quivered because of his wrath. A cloud was sent forth by his breath, and devouring fire from his mouth, before him fierce coals were inflamed, and he bent down the skies and descended, and darkness was under his feet and he rode on the whirlwind and flew, and was seen on the wings of the wind, and put on his covering of darkness, collecting black watery cloud, and bright streams of fire burnt before him, and thundered the Lord from the skies. The highest thus uttered his thunders, and shot lightnings, arrows, and darts, and torrents of water were seen, and the base of the world was laid bare before the supreme in his anger by the whiff of the breath of his mouth. He sent from on high, and he took me, pulled me out from the powerful seas. From my enemies strong he redeemed me, from haters more strong than myself. In the day of distresses he helped me. The Lord was himself my support, and brought me again into freedom. He drilled me because he approved. For my virtues the Lord gave reward, my honor renewed to my hand. For I kept to the path of the Lord, and I went not astray from my God. For all his decrees I kept with me, and turned not away from his laws. And to him I always was faithful. So the Lord gave my goodness reward, because I was pure in his sight. To the merciful you will show mercy, and with the upright you are straight. You are pure to those who are pure, but with the rebellious you strive. And you save the oppressed of the people, and look down with scorn on the proud. And you, Lord, alone are my light." Lord, therefore enlighten my gloom, for by that I an army can chase, and with God can leap over a wall. The pathway of God is a straight one, the words of the Lord are refined, he is to all trusting a shield. For who is a God but the Lord, and who is a rock but our God? The God who is mighty in strength, whose pathway is perfectly straight, who makes my feet like to a stag's, who supports me in mounting the hills, who instructed my hands in the fighting, and to break a steel bow with my arms. 
and you are my shield of salvation, and imparting your power to myself, you stretch out my stridings below me, so my ankles will never slip down. I can chase all my foes and destroy them, and never turn back till they're done. I assail them and strike till they rise not, for under my feet they fall down. You gird me with strength for the war, and my legs under me are kept straight, but you throw my enemies backwards so that I can destroy those who hate. They shout, but they have no defender. To the Lord, but he answers them not. While I grind them like dust of the earth, I stamp them like mire in the streets. You saved from the strife of my people, and kept at the head of the tribes. A people I never knew serve me, and sons of the strangers bow down, to hear me with listening ears. And the children of foreigners run, their robes closely girt by their belts. Let the Lord live, bless my rock. I forever exult in my God, and rejoice in God's fortress that saved me. The God who has given me my right, who subjected the nations beneath me, freed from foes, and has raised me on high, and redeemed from the men who opposed. For this I will praise you, O Lord, and chant of your name to the heathen. Your salvation exult in my heart, and the kindness you show your Messiah, and David's enduring heir. Chapter 23 and these are the last words of David, says David the son of Jesai, and the speech of the man raised on high, and whom Jacob's God had approved, and sweetly to Israel who sings. For to me the Lord's Spirit has spoken, and this has declared by my tongue, and Israel's God has informed me, and Israel's hope has revealed, as a guide to the righteous of men, as a guide to the reverence of God like the light of the morning at sunrise, as a bright shining dawn without clouds, with showers for the meadows of earth. Though my house is not perfect with God, yet he made a long treaty with me, extending and sure in all things, for it perfectly saves and delights. And will he not cause it to flourish? But the vial he will fling out like thorns which cannot be taken by hand." but the man who approaches to them must take staves of iron or wood and put them to burn in the fire. The following are the names of the heroes whom David appointed officers. Josheb Bashebeth, the Takmonai, chief of the staff, with Adino, the Atsnite, over the eight hundred. He was lame of one foot. And after him, Alazar ben Dodai ben Akokai, one of the three generals who were with David when they defied the Philistim who had drawn out for battle, and the men of Israel had fled. He arose and fought the Philistim until his hand was cramped, and his hand stuck to his sword. But the ever-living produced a great victory on that day for him, and the forces that stuck behind like his skin. And after him, Shammah ben Aga of Hararai. Once, when the Philistim had gone out to raid, and were posted in a part of a field full of lentils, and the force fled before the Philistim, he stood in the open and reformed it, and attacked the Philistim when the ever-living granted a great victory. These three had descended with their troop of thirty, and came in harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam. And the troops of the Philistim were encamped in the plain of Rephaim. For David at that time was in the cave, and the Philistim then occupied Bethlehem. David, however, desired, and said, Who will get me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem that is near the gate? When the three heroes passed through the camp of the Philistim, and drew water from the well that is near the gate of Bethlehem, and brought it to David, but he would not drink it, but poured it out to the ever-living, and said, The ever-living would punish me if I did that. It is the blood of the men who risked their lives, so I will not drink it. These were the actions of these three heroes. Abishai, also the brother of Joab ben Zeruiah, was a great hero, for he raised his spear against three hundred and defeated them. He was not considered equal to the three. However, he had honor with the three and became their commander, but he did not equal the three. Benaiah also was a brave man of many deeds, of Kabzal. He defeated the two champions of Moab. He descended and overpowered a lion in a pit on a snowy day. He also defeated the Mitzurite officer whom he met. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he ran at him with a club and pulled the spear from the hands of the Egyptian and killed him with his own spear. Benaiah ben Jehoiada performed these deeds, therefore he was stationed with the three heroes. 
he was honored with the thirty but became not one of the three david however made him his counsellor asahel the brother of joab was in the thirty alcanan ben dodo the bethlehemite kelitz the flatite ira ben akash the tekavite abayazar of anathoth mebunai the cushite salgon the akokite Macri the Netophathite, Caleb ben Bana the Netophathite, Atai ben Rabbi of Gibath, sons of Benjamin, Beniah the Fraphonite, Hadai from the rock of Gash, Abai Alban the Arbathite, Asmoth the Barkumite, Elikaba the Shalbonite, Jonathan the son of Joshem, Shama the Harahite, Ayam ben Sharaal of Hahor, Aliphalet ben Akasbai, son of the Makathali, Eliam ben Akithophel, the Gilamite, Katsrai the Carmelite, Farai the Arabian, Egal ben Nathan with Zobo, sons of the Gadite, Tseleg the Ammonite, Nakurai the Barathite, squire to Joab ben Zeruiah, Ira the Itherite, Garab the Itherite, Uriah the Hittite, in all thirty seven. Chapter 24 The ever-living, however, was again angry with Israel, when David turned and commanded to go and make a conscription of Israel and Judah, for the king ordered Joab, commander of his forces, to whip them up in all the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and brigade in the forces, that I may know the number of my forces. But Joab answered the king, May your ever-living God increase the forces by enlistment a hundredfold, that the eyes of your majesty may see. But, your majesty, why are you inclined to this thing? The order of the king, however, prevailed over Joab and the officers of the army. So Joab and the officers of the army went from the presence of the king to conscript Israel for the forces. They also passed over the Jordan and encamped at Aroar on the south of the city which is in the mid-valley of Gad and Jazer. Thence he went to Gilgal, and the lowlands of Kadchi, and came to Dan, and around to Zidon. From there they went to the fortress of Zur, and all the villages of the Hivites and the Canaanites. Then they went to the south of Judah to Beersheba, and whipped up the whole country, and came to a finish on the tenth day of the ninth month at Jerusalem, when Joab delivered the number enrolled in the forces to the king, and in Israel it was eight hundred thousand men, strong to draw the sword and of the men of judah five hundred thousand men then the heart of david reproved him after he had conscripted the people and david said to the ever-living i have done grievously by what i have done but now lord pass over the fault of your servant for i have been foolish when david arose in the morning then the word of the ever-living came to gad the reciter david's preacher to say go and speak to david thus says the ever-living i will lay three loads for you choose one of them and i will make it for you gad consequently went to david and informed him and asked shall seven years of famine come for you upon the country or will you fly for three months before your enemies while they pursue you or shall there be three days destruction on your country now instruct me and show what reply i shall return to my sender when the king replied to Gad, Oh, it is very hard for me. Let me, however, fall into the hand of the ever-living, for his mercies are many, for I would not fall into the hand of man. The ever-living, therefore, sent a destruction to Israel from daybreak until afternoon, and there died of the people from Dan to Beersheba seventy-seven thousand men. But when the messenger stretched his hand to Jerusalem to desolate it, he had pity for the flock, and said to the messenger, Enough of the people are desolated now, withdraw your hand. And the messenger of the ever-living was near the thrashing floor of Aruana the Jebusite. But David appealed to the ever-living when he saw the messenger who assailed the people, exclaiming, I myself have sinned, and I myself have offended, but these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, be on me and upon my father's house. Then Gad came at that moment and said to him, Go up, raise an altar to the ever-living at the granary of Aruana the Jebusite. 
Consequently David went up as the ever-living ordered him, and Aruana, looking forward, saw the king and his officers approaching to him. So Aruana went and bowed to the king with face earthward. Then Aruana asked, Why does his majesty come to his servant? And David replied, To buy from you this granary, to build an altar to the ever-living, to remove the plague from off the people. Aruana said to David, Take it, and let the king offer up what is good in his eyes. See, there are the oxen for a sacrifice, and the thrashing machine and yokes of the oxen for wood. Aruana, as a king, gives the whole to the king. And Aruana added to the king, May your ever-living God accept you. David, however, replied to Aruana, No, but I will buy them of you by payment, for I will not offer to my ever-living God an offering costing me nothing. So David bought the granary and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver, and David built there an altar to the ever-living, and offered a burnt offering and thank offering when the ever-living was entreated for the land, and removed the plague from the country. The End of Chapters 19-24 through 24, and The End of the Second Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English Translated by Ferrar Fenton Recording by Mark Penfold